So in this video I will be talking about some data wrangling uh, actions that are quite basic uh, but important for you guys um, to work on the exercise. So in the first place um, I will be talking a bit about file origin consequences uh, very shortly. Um, I will talk about filtering and sorting your data and I will show you how you can remove uh, duplicates in a data set. Um, I'll be using uh, two different data sets uh, for this video, so let's have a look at them. Uh, the first one is called exam scores uh, digital methods, and the second one is from the Twitter um, exercise, which is called timeline data example. It's always a good idea if you have a data set uh, to open it up in uh, Excel, for instance, or in a notepad or something like that to see how the data are structured. So let's open this file in notepad. And what do we see here? So in the first row, it's clear that we have uh, the names of the variables in the data set. So how many classes has a student attended? Um, well, it's not in the first row. The first row are just is just a numbering. Uh, whereas in the second uh, first column, whereas in the second column, you will see um, the number of classes somebody has attended um, on digital methods. Next column um, would be the gender column. Um, it's not very cleanly structured, but uh, this would be. The gender is zero for male and one for female, and so on. Um, then we have a column with <coughs> the mean score uh, for the um, courses uh, those students took in the uh, second bachelor. And then finally, we have uh, in this column the score on the digital methods exam. So that's in a nutshell the data set and what you also might notice is that although it's called a comma separated value file, uh, the values are not uh, separated by a comma. It seems more like uh, a tab that is separating uh, these values. Probably Power BI, if we open it up in Power BI, Power BI uh, won't have a problem with it and will probably automatically detect uh, the delimiter of this file. Let's have a look at the second data set. So let's do the same. We open it in a text editor. Uh, and there's a few things we can see here. In the first place, again, this is called comma separated value file. Uh, but the separators are not commas, but semicolons. Uh, again, we see the variable names in the first row. So um, what is the ID of the user that sent a tweet? So to refresh your memory, this is a sample that I took from the data I collected and from all the followers uh, of political parties. Um, and this uh, data file here has the um, tweet data, so the timeline data. So you have uh, a user, so a user ID. So this is the same user until here. Um, you can see the date of the tweet, when the tweet was sent, uh, the hour when the tweet was sent, uh, the text of the tweet, uh, whether it is a retweet, uh, what it ID of the tweet itself is, uh, how many users were mentioned, whether it is in reply to somebody else, and whether the tweet is a quote. Um, already um, we can see some strange things happening here, and this has to do with uh, file origins. Uh, so this clearly should be Belgium, but it doesn't show very good. Uh, we see similar problems arise here here, here, um, and probably a lot of other places. 
this happens quite often when you uh, collect uh, data on social or social network data. Uh, Twitter, for instance, returns uh, text in a different, let's say, file format or text format is maybe a better explanation um, than standard uh, text formats that are being used um, as a standard in text reading programs, for instance, also in Excel. So you will have to um, define yourself. Well, just click on the relevant uh, file origin uh, that you need to choose. So let's see how we do that in Power BI. So we close these data sets and we start a Power BI. <clears throat> so you know, <clears throat> sorry, you know how this works. So you get the data. Uh, we'd like, or we have a CSV files, so we use that. Let's open uh, the exam scores file and see what that does. So. Um, this looks uh, more or less okay. We already see that Power BI, as expected, uh, knows that is a, it is a tab-separated file. This is a file origin. doesn't have to change here because we don't see any problems. Um, what is a problem, however, is the fact that um, the variable names are in the wrong spot. So these numbers are the row numbers and this here starts the number of classes attended it's apparently sorted on the number of classes attended but so these variables should switch one position um, so let's just do that in power bi do it manually so we transform the data and if we double click on the variable name you can change it. So I'm just going to copy paste it. So double click, I copy. I rename it because you can't have two columns with the same name. And again, I double click and I paste. I copy and I paste and I copy. Row names, uh, row numbers, and I paste. So this is the data file uh, for the exam scores. Digital methods uh, looks nice. So let's close and apply. And of course, nothing happens here, but uh, what you will see or will notice is that uh, your variable names uh, are here. Let me put that below. So this is where your variable names uh, appear. We could do a quick check uh, to see what's happening. So let's have a look at gender and the mean score. And let's have that in a table. Then you see Power BI is already doing something strange. So why do we have uh, the number 88 when it comes to gender? So in our data set, there's only two genders, uh, not 88. So the real pro problem here is that um, it apparently considers gender, the zero and the one as a number. Um, and then it doesn't allow you to do um, non-mathematical operations. So we will have to uh, recode that uh, or the type of the variable, we will have to change that. So we go back to the uh, data, uh, the Power Query editor. So we click on transform data. And then we can simply uh, 
so set the type of variable by clicking here and then we can choose so now it's a whole number so it shouldn't be a whole number actually it's a category so let's just say it's a text type so if we close and apply and we do this again so we pick gender and pick mean score so now this makes more sense so gender is uh, either zero or one however again um, a mean score should be an average of all scores for males and an average of all scores for females and this is not um, doing it right so let's have a look here so for your visualizations you can uh, determine what happens uh, with the variables here <clears throat> so let's click on the mean score and you see that he's taking a sum so what we actually want to know is um, for instance the average score uh, for uh, males and females on the exam um, no not on the, on the exam it's uh, the variable the mean score for the courses in second bachelor so we want to have an average of that um, for the two groups so we click on average and now you see that it changes here so um, zero were the males so on average the, in second bachelor they scored 12.33 uh, over all their courses and females scored 11.99 right but we're diverging a bit <clears throat> so let's go back to our original intent uh, let's delete this and let's now open the second data set so we get data and again this is a comma separated value file we're looking for so the timeline data open <clears throat> so now we have this problem with um, the strange characters so these are probably emoticons this needs to become bell here uh, and so on so how do we do that we have the option here file origin to set it now you will see there's a lot of um, options to pick from now what uh, in 95 percent of the time will work for you especially if it's social media data is to um, pick the utf8 option so let's do that and see what happens Yeah, so this apparently worked. So we have Bell here now. We have these emoticons. Um, so this uh, seems to solve our problem. Uh, I think for the other options, this look, looks pretty good. So again, it also, well, Power BI also identified uh, the fact that uh, the comma separated value file is separated with a semicolon so let's transform the data and again this looks pretty neat with everything we want probably you would want to um, change the type of the id of the user also although it's a number it doesn't make any sense to do mathematical operations on it like summing them up or taking an average of those uh, users well of those numbers so we'd better set that to text so this seems to work like whether it's a retweet or not is false or true so the type here is true false this is correct tweet id probably also best to set it to text tweet date automatically detected that is a day, date time format so we have the date and we have the time whether it's a quote or not it's also true or false and in reply to we already changed that and the number of uh, users, users mentioned in a tweet uh, is a whole number so that's correct so let's check 
if this is right. So this uh, tweet should have three mentions, three people mentioned. Um, oops. So you can actually see the text down here. So we have one mention, oops, two mentions, and three mentions. So this seems to be correct. Well, Art, so if you're happy with that, um, we could um, close and apply. So and now we have uh, two different data sets loaded in Power BI. So we have this one, and if we click on it, we have the second one with the variables in it. All right, now for uh, sorting, and uh, sorting and filtering, um, to do that, let's go back uh, to the uh, query editor. So let's transform our data. So we can choose here which data file we want to work on. So we can have the timeline data or the exam scores data. So let's assume that we wanted to sort and this, the, this data set based on the score somebody has uh, on the digital methods exam. Uh, that's, this is quite simple to do. So you can uh, click here on this arrow. And you immediately have the opportunity to sort your data. So if we want to have the highest score uh, on top, we sort descending. If we want to have the lowest score on top, we sort ascending. So let's see the student with the highest score or what the highest score is. And that's a student who scored 16.18 uh, on the digital methods exam. So and then we have this information on the mean score for uh, second bachelor courses. Uh, we have the gender, so it's a female that had the highest score. Uh, she attended all 12 classes from digital methods, and that's it. So now what if we only wanted to um, have a look at the male students, then we would need to filter. And we do that in the same way or with the same button as we did for um, as have, yeah, sorting. So the filtering is also, you click here, you open it with this little arrow, and then you can just determine uh, on what you want to filter. <clears throat> so we only want to see the scores of the uh, male students. So we can click the one away, so this won't show up anymore. So now we only have the data for the male students, and uh, so the highest score, because this is still uh, sorted, this data is still sorted according to the highest score on the digital methods exam, so the highest score for the male students is 14.74. We could do similar things with a timeline data set. Um, so let's have a look. We could, for instance, sort on the user, but it seems that this, this is already the case. We could sort, well, let's sort on the uh, number of user mentions. Um, so I want to know what a um, tweet is with the most user mentions. So let's sort descending. And then we see, so 
there's two tweets that have uh, in their tweet text eight people mentioned. So now what if we wanted to um, only have a look at tweets that have at least uh, five users mentioned, then we can just filter. them out and then we have only the tweets with five user mentions or more. I still I noticed we have some null values here so this a uh, null means missing so let's see what's happening here so we only filter on the null values. Then it seems we have a bunch of missing data now the reason for that is probably uh, simple. Um, in that I took a very small sample from the larger data set. So I took only 630 uh, data points and I deleted what the thousands and thousands of row beneath it um, and saved it in a different file but apparently uh, Power BI um, integrated this as well. So if you don't want to have these null values, you could just um, filter on them. So where did I do that? User mentions. So actually we want everything except for the null values. And here we are. Uh, of course, um, this is for filtering and sorting. Um, I also need to talk about how to filter uh, duplicates. So maybe this data set is a good one for that because we have users. Let's sort according to users. User values. Um, now there's a lot of duplicates here. So if you want to remove them, uh, there's this easy um, option. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to delete uh, the other columns. Or no, I'm going to keep them and let's see if you can um, remove duplicates based on one column only. Uh, so what you want to do here is um, you want to remove rows. And then you have the opportunity to remove duplicates. Or you have other options here, which I will not uh, talk about in this video. Um, so let's see what happens if we ask him to remove duplicates. Yeah, he does it because we selected a specific column here. So let's see what happens if we pick another column. And remove duplicates. So he asked this question because I went back maybe I should go a little slower so I cancel. So what is happening here is I went one step back so from the remove duplicates uh, option. So as I showed earlier you can go back with what with the actions uh, you performed. So if I don't want to remove the duplicates for the user IDs, I can just delete this action. So I delete it. And let's now um, see if we can remove the duplicates in the user mentions. So if he does it right, we should have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. So let's give it a shot. Let's remove it. There you go. So it does remove duplicates based on the column you select. Of course, if you wanted to have more than one column, this is probably also possible. So you could, uh, if you press the control key, so press control and keep it pressed, and then you can select more than one column if you want to. 
So let's see what happens if we ask him to remove uh, duplicates. So duplicated rows, but now he will um, remove them if they're identical for the ID of the user as well as for the user mentions. Um, so remove duplicates. So and now you have a little bit of a larger data set left, which is logical because the uh, reason to remove those rows is more stringent. Okay, this um, was everything I wanted to talk about uh, in the video. Uh, so I talked about understanding file origin. So this has to do with, with um, how your text is read by different text editors, social media data, social network data. Um, often has this kind of um, strange readings of, of, of specific symbols, so you can uh, alter and change that in Power BI. Um, I also discussed filtering and sorting your data in Power BI and how to uh, remove duplicates.